Today I want to read a little slice of Maldoror by Lautremont. And if you've heard anything about Maldoror or Lautremont, you've heard that he, this book was a, a precursor of surrealism. Uh, that he, he was, Lautremont was the big hero of the surrealists. And when googling Lautremont or Maldoror, you'll come across this reference over and over associating this book with surrealism despite the fact that it was written decades before the Surrealist movement. Um, and if the heart of literary Surrealism is um, automatic writing, just stream of consciousness writing without any attempt to guide it by the rational conscious mind, uh, if that is at the heart of literary Surrealism, then I don't think Maldoror is Surrealism. Um, there are other aspects that you might say are surrealistic, certainly. Uh, Lachman employs a rhetoric that may seem at times to reach a kind of delirium. Um, however, he always had something in mind. Uh, the madness was uh, for a purpose. Uh, he was either making a kind of linguistic joke, making an ethical or a moral observation, or in most cases, uh, he was demonstrating um, a, a use of language and therefore a misuse of language. Um, and the whole point for Lautremont was to master language, was to um, be in control of your language. And, and uh, he, he was constantly pointing out um, how, how you could inadvertently uh, think the thoughts of others uh, or take on the discourses of others. This was a huge danger for Lautremont. Um, so I'm going to read this little passage which to me um, is anti-surrealism. Happy is he who slumbers peacefully in a bed of feathers torn from the breast of the eider, without being aware that he is betraying himself. It is thirty years now since I have slept. Since the unpronounceable day of my birth, I have sworn an irreconcilable hatred against the slumberous couch. It is I who desired this. Let none other be accused. Quickly, let all men be cleared of abortive suspicion. Do you observe upon my brow this pale crown? Tenacity weaved it there with its pale fingers. As long as a trace of burning sap runs through my bones like a torrent of Morton metal, I shall never sleep. Each night I force my livid eyes to stare at the stars through the panes of my window. In order to be surer of myself, I prop my swollen eyelids open with splinters. When dawn breaks, it finds me in the same attitude, my body resting at a vertical position erect against the cold plaster of the wall. Yet, it happens sometimes that I dream. But without losing for an instant the lively sense of my personality or the free faculty of movement, know that nightmare hides himself in the phosphorescent crannies of darkness while fever fingers my face with its stump and every unclean beast brandishes its claws. Very well. It is my will that keeps them going round and round in order to provide solid nourishment for its perpetual activity. Indeed, Adam that wreaks revenge by its extreme weakness, free will does not fear to maintain with strong authority that it does not include sottishness among its sons. He who sleeps is less than an animal castrated yesterday. Although insomnia bears towards the depths of the grave these muscles which already exhale the odor of cypress, never will the white catacomb of my intelligence open its sanctuary to the eyes of the Creator. A secret and noble justice towards the open arms of which I instinctively fling myself commands me to hunt down with every quarter that ignoble punishment. Fearful enemy of my imprudent soul, I forbid my unhappy loins to repo repose upon the dewy grass at the hour when they light up the lantern on the coast. Conqueror, I reject the ambush of your hypocritical opium. Consequently, it is certain that my heart, 
that starving thing that feeds upon itself, has matured its plans by that weird struggle. As impenetrable as a giant, I have lived ceaselessly with the sockets of my eyes gaping. It is averred that at least during the day one may offer triumphant opposition to the great outside object who is not familiar with his name, for they will watch over his defenses with remarkable tenacity. But as soon as the vaporous veil of evening descends even upon the condemned man about to be hanged, oh, to see one's intellect in the hands of a sacrilegious stranger. An implacable scalpel probes into its dense underbrush. Consciousness exhales a long death rattle of malediction, for the veil of its modesty undergoes cruel lacerations. Humiliation. Our door is open to the ferocious curiosity of the celestial bandit. I have not deserved this infamous torture, hideous spy upon my causality. If I exist, I am not someone else. I will not admit any equivocal plurality within myself. I wish to dwell alone within my intimate reason. Autonomy! Or let them change me into a hippopotamus. Bury yourself in the earth, O anonymous stigma, and appear no more before my haggard indignation. My subjectivity and the Creator, this is too much for one brain. When night obscures the flight of hours, who is he who has not fought against the influence of sleep in his bed, dampened with glacial sweat? That bed, clasping dying faculties to its bosom, is nothing but a tomb composed of boards of scantling pine. The will vanishes insensibly, as if in the presence of an invisible force. A viscous wax dulls the crystalline substance of the eye. The eyelids seek one another like two friends. The body is no better than a breathing corpse. Finally, four enormous stakes transfix the four limbs to the mattress. And observe, if you please, that the sheets are nothing but shrouds. There lies the censer where the incense of religions burn. Eternity rumbles like a distant sea and approaches rapidly. The room has disappeared. Prostrate yourselves, humans, in the fiery chapel. Uh, and one, one more comment about that passage, which, which I really love, is his, the way he uh, subverts and reverses categories. Uh, Mal Dror was this fantastic creature who took it upon himself to uh, attack both man and God. God being the Christian God, Christian religion. And in the uh, Christian belief, especially amongst the more fundamentalist sects, to engage in something like automatic writing, to, to attempt to open up your mind to the cosmos, it's very, very dangerous. You're opening up your mind to the forces of evil, to demonic uh, influences and presences. You're basically handing yourself over to Satan. Um, and uh, I think it's very amusing here that uh, Maldoror uh, will not let himself go to sleep to the point where he puts splinters in his eyes to prop them open uh, because... Uh, <laughs> to his way of thinking, to fall asleep and to lose conscious control is to allow, not Satan, but God <laughs> to come in uh, and, uh, and take over. So he has to be vigilant against God.